Hello, everyone. Welcome to the live ball session. My name is Yong Kang He. I'm a lead cloud native SE of Custom by Veeam. Together with me, I am Desmond Lai. I'm the storage tech partner SA for AWS in APJ. We're very happy to be here today to talk about the containers, Kubernetes, how the backup works, how the DR works, how the application mobility works. That's right. So Desmond, what are the trends you see in the field? Well, based on customer feedback and service that we get, uh, we do see a lot of customers deploying Kubernetes as self-managed clusters. Mm -hmm. And management for this can get a bit complicated as they start growing, yeah. uh, especially for larger enterprises. Yeah. Right. And another thing that another trend that we've observed is that uh, Kubernetes started as a way to create stateless apps, mm -hmm. but as it matures, uh, our customers get more creative. They started creating more stateful applications with Kubernetes as well. So, what are the Kubernetes services offered by AWS? So the fully managed offering from AWS is called Elastic Kubernetes Service, mm -hmm. EKS for short. Yeah, so let's say I got a MySQL application running on EKS. What are the typical components we will see? So great question. Now, um, as we're talking about stateful apps, it typically start with what we call a persistent data layer here. It's typically a storage in a form of EBS volume or EFS file system. And then we will typically present this to what we call a pod. Right. A pod here is the smallest, most granular object within a cluster, typically representing a single instance of a single application. Now, how we present storage is through a component we call PVC, which is persistent volume claim. It's just a way for the pod to claim uh, the volumes presented to it. Right. Mm -hmm. And a collection of pods is grouped into what we call a service. So a service is just an abstract of how we present applications and expose it to your users or to other applications as well. Now, uh, since it's Kubernetes, uh, there are other loosely coupled components as well. So you typically have what we call configure maps, right? For your configuration strings. Yep. You also have uh, secrets as well. So secrets, think of it as your passwords, yeah, or um, encryptions, so on and so forth. That's right. Yeah. It looks like there are so many different Kubernetes configurations. That's Is there right. any challenges when customers deploy the container as the applications? Well, as you just mentioned, you do have a lot of moving parts and components here. So imagine if one of these components were to get corrupted, or you want to restore just a single part of this component. Right, let's say the secrets. So is it possible or does our customer have to rebuild the whole cluster? Yeah. Another one we do see is that you have a persistent data layer here. Mm -hmm. So what happens if data is corrupted here or something might have happened to the whole layer itself? How are we protecting the data yep. and the persistent data layer itself? I guess you made a very good point. So when customer running the container as the application, you do face multiple challenges. Maybe somebody deletes secrets, uh, like you say, or maybe configure maps or the EBS volume is gone. Mm -hmm. So I tell you what, custom K10, that's our product name. We can help you address all these different challenges. So custom K10, typically we're running in a separate namespace. We call custom IO. In the moment custom K10 installed to the EKS cluster, we allow you to treat the whole MySQL application as one operation unit. And from here, we allow you to take a snapshot, take a snapshot of all of your Kubernetes applications, your configurations, and your data. Mm -hmm. So we take the snapshot of the whole application we also allow you to make another copy to Amazon S3, which is more reliable, and you can leverage the cheaper cloud storage for long-term retention. Just to add another point, you can enable the object lock to avoid the ransomware attack. All right. So S3 is also highly durable, highly available as well. Absolutely. So, it makes sense. so yeah, it looks like 
um, Kestrin is able to take care of a lot of EKS workloads in AWS. However, some of our customers are still on premise, mm -hmm. running self managed Kubernetes, yep. or maybe they're on another platform. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're looking to embark on a journey of fully managed with uh, AWS on EKS. How can Kestrin help our customers achieve this? I guess that's common, you know, customers are still running from on premises or other cloud. Mm -hmm. So custom K10, we are Kubernetes native. So that means we are natively running inside a Kubernetes cluster. Let's say you got a Kubernetes cluster running on premise. So you have a my uh, PostgreSQL application here. We allow you to use the same way. You take a snapshot here, and since it's on premise, and maybe from other cloud, we allow you to leverage your uh, on premise NFS storage, or could be you know S3 compatible storage. But since you know Amazon S3 is so popular, we allow you to send another copy to Amazon S3. And the beauty here is, since you already send another copy to Amazon S3, we allow you to easily, quickly to import to the EKS cluster. So once the import finish, basically the PostgreSQL application migrated to the target EKS cluster. So in the short, we allow you to do the same backup from your on-premises or other cloud. We also allow you to use the same tool to do a one-time migration to Amazon EKS, or you could be use Amazon EKS as a standby DR. Right, so uh, DR migration, all that's possible with Kasten, right? Correct. Okay. So my last question is this. Um, what if my customers, our customers, um, it's not looking to build stateful apps within EKS, but they prefer to utilize what we call uh, managed databases as the persistent data layer. For example, here I have RDS, Relational Database Service from um, AWS. Is Kasten able to address data protection for RDS as well? Yeah, I think that's another common use case. When customers deploy the containerized application, they might still leverage in the RDS. Mm -hmm. So custom K10 will allow you to use the same way. We allow you to take a snapshot of the RDS. It could be RDS Aurora or RDS PostgreSQL. I'm just using the same snapshot, you know, icon here. But we allow you to take a snapshot, also send another copy to Amazon S3, which is more reliable again. Great. So the same process, the same platform, you know, addressing different uh, kind of methodologies customers choose to adopt when running Kubernetes. That's right. All right. Great. So um, thank you everyone for spending time with us uh, today. We hope you have learned something, especially with uh, Kasten and of course Kubernetes with AWS. Thank you. Thanks.